Yeah, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I'm pleased to be standing in for Martin Callanan. Uh, we are quite confident that we are doing better than some people have predicted in the UK. But first of all, before talking about the election results, let me add my voice to condemning the atrocity that happened in Brussels yesterday uh, and send my condolences to the families of the victims. This is not what we want to see happening on the streets of Europe, particularly uh, at this time when we are asking the people of Europe to turn out and vote in a major European election or at any time. Europe surely, if we have one message, it's to end hate, to end conflict. And this uh, horrific atrocity yesterday uh, must be condemned by all right-thinking uh, people. We see from the outcome, and I'm also uh, gratified that there has been a slight increase in the turnout over the whole of Europe, including in Britain, but we see from the uh, predicted election results so far that the ECR will have 39 members. Right now we have 11 participating member states and 57 members. Uh, we know that we have passed the threshold of seven member states. We are confident that we may end up with more participating member states than we have at the present time and that this figure will be seen to be dramatically short of what we will end up in our negotiations with many uh, parties of the centre-right across the whole of Europe. Our party is a reformist party. We're the European Conservative and Reformist Group. We've seen from the election results across the whole of Europe that hundreds of thousands of people, millions of people, have demanded reform, and that has been our core platform since we founded our group five years ago. I wish all of these people who were demanding reform were voting for parties who participate in our group, but I can tell you that we are going to see big changes in the new parliament. We cannot ignore the voice of so many millions of European citizens. It is time that we started listening and it's time that we started on the reform agenda in a serious way. When I've been asked why we did not put forward a candidate for this, a Spitzen candidate uh, for the presidency because we do not believe that that is a legitimate election. We believe the Lisbon Treaty told the Council of Ministers to take account of the election result. And if they take account of the election result, the centre-right and the right have won this election. But to put forward Jean-Claude Juncker as a candidate uh, would not meet with the approval, I am certain, of our ECR group. Uh, we would want to see somebody of uh, more of a reformist agenda from perhaps the EPP, if we are to support anyone. Uh, at all from the centre right. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Uh, in order to keep the timings, uh, timings working, we'll just have one question for Struan. Uh, have anyone with a question? Yeah, James from Your Active. Uh, hello, it's James Crisp here from uh, Your Active. I'd just like to ask how, given these uh, exit polls and given the rise in popularity of parties like UKIP, uh, how you plan to stay relevant? Well, I think we'll not only stay relevant, I think we might find ourselves in the position of kingmaker or even queenmaker uh, within the new European Parliament. We're going to see a hung parliament if you look at these results. And we're going to be in a crucial position where people will be coming and asking us uh, for our support to produce the new president of the a European Commission and to produce the new president of the European Parliament. So I think we are in a very good position indeed. And I think when you see the final outcome of these elections and the final size of the ECR group, we will be in a very powerful and very important and relevant position indeed. 